Well, there was nothing anybody could do, apparently. The Pittsburgh Penguins fall to the Ottawa Senators 2-1 to one here at PPG Paints Arena. Hi, I'm Dan Kingersky on the National Hockey Now and the Pittsburgh Hockey Now YouTube channel. Do me a favor, before we begin this Penguins post-game Q&A, like and subscribe to the channel. The more people who watch these, the more we get paid and the easier these massive travel bills uh, are. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, the world economy is slowing down and we need to make sure we get every nickel just so we can keep doing this uh, every single day. Uh, the Penguins blitzed the Ottawa Senators for 49 shots on uh, Monday night. The total was actually revised up well after the game. I'm not sure how or why, but uh, it was. And they only allowed 21 shots, yet they lost two to one. If the hockey gods uh, have any sense of humor, they are just laughing maniacally uh, from what they've been doing to the Penguins. Uh, the Penguins, uh, I think their scoreless streak almost hit 120 minutes, if not 130, before Ricard Raquel scored with about five minutes to go in the third period to tie the game. And you think because of the way the Penguins are going, they're going to fill the net. That's what Brian Russ said. Like, you know, every shift we jumped over the wall, we felt like we were going to get that tying goal. We felt like we were going to get more. And then the referees called a penalty late in the third period. I'm not saying it was a bad penalty, or a bad call, rather. I'm just saying it was rather odd that uh, this is the bad luck that befell the Penguins. Chad Ruedel gets whistled. Ottawa gets a power play. Brian Rust blocks a shot by Sanderson. Hurts his arm. Can't clear the puck because he's got, you know, one wing. Ottawa gets the puck beneath, you know, behind Rust very quickly. Brian Dumoulin beaten to the net there, and it's a 2-1 to one game. Drake Batherson's shot actually hits the posts. Doesn't go in. Hits Jari and trickles in. That's the kind of night the Pittsburgh Penguins had. Now, uh, if you read the PHM Plus report card, please do. Please subscribe. Uh, if you do subscribe to PHN Plus, you get an ad-free experience. If you hate the ads, if you just uh, say Kingersky. Enough with the uh, Ukrainian dating sites, by the way. <laughs> I have heard of those ads popping up on the website. We don't put them there. Google does. Uh, and that also is based on your search history. Uh, I'm not making any accusations. I'm just saying, you know, be careful what you search for. Google knows and they will put ads that they think can lure you in. Uh, but if, if you subscribe to PHM Plus, you'll get a very in-depth and thorough review of every single uh, Penguins game and uh, do that ad free. We appreciate your support on that. Now, uh, the one thing the Penguins did not do, they didn't get the traffic in front of the net. They didn't get the shots between the dots. They didn't create those ugly, gritty, grimy scoring chances and shots in the you know let's call it what what it really is in the scoring zone so despite the fact they had puck possession for i would say it seemed like 50 of the 60 minutes in the game ottawa never had sustained offensive pressure but the penguins remained on the perimeter far too often they faced a goalie who has who had just one NHL start before tonight. That was back in 2017-18. Dylan Ferguson made a start for the Vegas Golden Knights. So he's been taking a lot of bus rides in the ECHL and, and bus rides in the AHL. I think the Penguins might have, I don't want to say taken him for granted, but I think they thought if they got enough shots on him, they would get rebounds, they would get you know, those, those second chances almost as a matter of fact. And in fact, uh, look, uh, Ferguson played uh, extremely well. He got himself in position. He was soft, which meant, you know, he was absorbing those shots. So the Penguins just kept hitting his crest and hitting his crest and hitting right in the middle of the chest. Ricard Raquel said, we, you know, we didn't get that, that rebound that we needed. Um, I, I did ask Raquel if that was the one thing they needed to do tonight. He's like, well, that's easy to say afterwards. In, in fairness, I said it during the game, too. Uh, but, but, you know, Mike Sullivan even said that that's one thing they were talking about on the bench. Traffic, traffic, 
get inside, get in that blue paint, get there. Unfortunately, if you look at the Penguins roster, uh, not too many of their wingers are guys who can get into that paint. The funny thing is, perhaps um, Drew O'Connor should have gotten a bit more ice time. Although, before we get in, you know what, in fact, let me just dive into the q and I've talked for five minutes now. Let me get in. Here we go. All right. Uh, let me adjust this. There we go. Put it back a little bit. I've got my selfie stick with the, with the nice light tonight. Kind of balances out the shine on my head, don't you think? All right, Q&A from Anthony DiPolito from my St. Edwards in Hermony stomping grounds. See, Tony <clears throat> Anthony was from Rilton. I lived in Hermony, and that's a rivalry like Springfield and I don't know the other Simpsons town. But um, no, we old, old. Uh, I guess we're both getting old. Once in what I had for the post game meal, what I'm going to have since it's Monday night, options are limited. You know what? My air, my my flight leaves at about six fifteen for Denver. And that means I have to be at the airport at 4 o'clock. That means I have to leave the house at 3.30. It is 11.30 as I record this. So ain't no rest for the wicked. I'll have a lemon bar probably for dinner tonight. Uh, Jeff wants to know, is the team's heart in it? Do they care? Well, Jeff, I mean, they put 49 shots on the Ottawa Senators. They played a full 60-minute game. I, I don't know that you can say they lacked heart on Monday night. Maybe they lacked a bit of battle. Maybe they lacked a killer instinct or an edge to their game. But I don't think they lacked uh, heart. Uh, and maybe that killer instinct and maybe that edge comes with a bit more confidence. Then again, maybe you can say that um, not getting into the blue paint, not getting into the crease, not roughing up uh, Dylan Ferguson. I mean, nobody really knocked him over. No one roughed him up. No one got in his grill. No one took away his sight lines. Uh, maybe it does take a bit of heart to get into those. But uh, listen, they lost Monday night. They know that. They are now out of a playoff spot. They know that too. I, I just, I, I don't, I don't think uh, the heart criticism is valid on Monday night. Now let's see how they respond against the Colorado Avalanche, huh? That's going to be. I mean, we're getting into some must-win territory here, or really, really have to win. I guess you, a must-win game is if you get eliminated. Uh, let's see here. Victor Spotlow says, "How do Ron Hextall and Mike Sullivan have jobs?" Mike Sullivan, actually, I thought coached a hell of a hockey game on Monday. Look, he made sweeping changes. He had a lineup with four depth defensemen slash minor league defensemen. And somehow, the, the, the Penguins dramatically and drastically outplayed the Ottawa Senators. Look, uh, I don't know if you, you probably didn't notice a couple of the changes that Mike Sullivan made after Ottawa power plays, after Ottawa scored at least the first goal. The next line up was not Jeff Carter's th uh, fourth line or even Ryan Paling's third line. It was Sidney Crosby. Sidney Crosby, actually, after Ottawa scored, Sidney Crosby centered Mikhail Granlund and Ryan Paling? I think so. I mean, he kind of made a makeshift defensive line with some offensive pop is what Sullivan did. That's a huge departure from what he's been kind of forcing himself to do. You know, he's been, go he's been playing by the book for most of the season. After a goal, you put your third line on the ice. You try to, you know, grind away a little bit and, and go from there. Sorry, I see my phone keeps slipping a little bit. Uh, Sullivan changed that, and it, it was very effective on um, on Monday night. I keep forgetting what day it is, but it was it was effective. There was there were, you know, a handful of of lineup changes. Oh. <laughs> now it's uh oh, there we go. Hang on. It's tough to hold a phone for 10 minutes. There. 
trying to balance it on the uh, railings. Here's where I'm standing, by the way. It's like the uh, it's like slashes uh, slashes shot in November rain. Uh, helicopter. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but Sullivan did make a lot of changes. Uh, the lineup changes, putting Ryan Paling at third line center, Granlund on the wing, and uh, he did uh, scratch Alex Nylander. And I know some fans were grumbling about that, but the reality is Nylander was playing responsible hockey, but he wasn't necessarily making an impact after his first game. He was responsible, but he wasn't um, doing anything in the offensive zone. He wasn't asserting himself, and he had chances to do so but was was not. And I'm not saying that the NHL game overwhelmed Alex Nylander, but I, I guess I am saying that he didn't take his opportunities. He didn't do enough to stick in the lineup. If you're going to bet on who's going to score a goal tonight between Danton Heinen getting a, you know, stepping into the offensive zone or Alex Nylander, the bet actually is on Heinen. He had a couple of, of looks. I thought the third line uh, played pretty well they had some tough assignments and and Ryan Paling boy you don't realize how fast he is until you really zone in on him but that's why Mike Sullivan has a job look we, we as I said on WPXI's final word you can you can keep asking me about Ron Hextall and his job status we don't know even who makes that decision we don't know what ownership's directives to Hextall were we we, we don't know anything along those lines. And anybody who tells you they know is kind of getting, you know, some secondhand stuff, I think. Unless, you know, <laughs> unless some people have some sources I don't know about. The reality is we just don't know about any of that stuff. So my answer is <laughs> uh, certainly Hextall. Um, I mean, the, the Penguins got 49 shots and you're complaining about Hextall. Let's 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 keep the focus where it should be. Um, Frank says Dumoulin's in the lineup. Rust on the top line, and Jeff Carter in the lineup. Expect more losses. If the Penguins get 49 shots against the Colorado Avalanche and only allow 21, uh, I'm going to put my money on the Penguins. Jeff Carter's fourth line had four scoring chances on Monday. They allowed zero. If that happens on Wednesday, I'll bet on the Penguins. Uh, the third line, I think, was about even in scoring chances and um, and shots allowed and all of that. They, were, if that happens, I'll bet on the Penguins. Brian Rust on the top line, the, the Crosby line, Crosby, they had just oodles of, of scoring chances with Rust. I mean. <laughs> I don't know what more you want from Monday night, except a bit more traffic in front of a little more ugly hockey. But the Penguins dominated. I, I, you know, I don't know what to tell you on that one. Let's see here. Dean says, what big changes? Well, you know, the, the lineup changes for, for one. Who and, you know, who Sullivan deployed and when he deployed them. Those were all big changes. He didn't shorten his bench so much as he rearranged it, rearranged the lines, rearranged the bench, rearranged ice times, did not give the fourth line very much ice time at all on Monday. Isn't that what you've all been clamoring for? And regarding Brian Dumoulin in the lineup, maybe you notice they have three defensemen on emergency recalls in the lineup, Dean. Three, not one, three. Who are you going to call up? Chris Ortiz in Wheeling, or maybe Chris is in, in uh, Wilkes-Barre. Th there's no one else, man. If, if another defenseman goes down, you might see Danton Heinen or Jeff Carter back on the blue line. Them just play with five defensemen. I mean, they're, they're 10 deep now. So let, let's, I, I get the frustration, but let's, let's um, keep it, you know, uh, I don't want to call you irrational. That would be mean, wouldn't it? But it, it's... <laughs> there's no options let's see here is it too late to trade for Ferguson Jim asks uh, I know I get it uh, Ferguson played the game of his life and he'll remember that one forever 
forever. And Glenn, do I think Mike Sullivan, Glenn Kaplan asks, do I think Mike Sullivan is getting orders from Ron Hextall on who to play? No. Uh, and I mean no. I mean, I think Mike Sullivan has more power within the organization than does Ron Hextall. I, I mean, I cannot imagine Ron Hextall saying, hey, Mike, I want Nylander out of the lineup. I want Danton Heinen in the lineup. Mike, I... I no. If there's, you know, if there's any power dynamic, it's, it's on Sullivan or in Sullivan's favor there. Uh, I, I get the conspiracy. I get the wonder. But you also have to realize the options at this point. Now, here's something to, to realize. You know, everyone's still clamoring for, look, I, I, I get it, the Penguins are losing. There's no one left in the AHL to call up. There's no one left to put in the lineup. This is it. This is all the players they've got. And I, I get looking for answers elsewhere, but the answers right now have to come from within the Penguins' room. And that's, uh, there's just no two ways about that. And I thought they provided a lot of answers on Monday. They just they didn't do that one thing. Whatever that one thing it was on, on numerous plays, they didn't get that one bounce. They didn't... They didn't do just enough. I mean, they, they dominated 49 to 21 in shots. What, uh, what else can I say uh, about that? This is the Pittsburgh Penguins season. Even when, they, even when they do things right, things seem to go wrong for them this season. Uh, that's all. I am going to uh, pop this up in the wee hours of the morning, probably as I'm headed to the airport. Uh, if you're headed to Denver... Uh, say hello. Uh, I think I uh, I might have time for a hot dog somewhere in Denver. Uh, I found a, a little taco joint that's like famous in Denver last time. I might have to revisit that. It was just one of those greasy little spoons. And you know me, if it's a greasy spoon, Dan is, is there. But send along your Denver recommendations. I, I do have kind of a free night on, on Tuesday, although I'll be uh, plugging away in the hotel just making sure that you are properly served. All right, from PPG Paints Arena, I'm Dan Kingers. We got this done in under 20 minutes. Look at me, I'm a rock star.